prime time local news serving the Lakeland and Midwest regions. Happy Monday everybody welcome to another week of prime time local news with Abby and myself bringing you news weather sports and more your question of the day a fun one at least for those who are into conspiracy theories um, what conspiracy theory do you actually believe and I'm really fascinated to hear what people chime in yeah I love watching videos about conspiracy theories and what people think happened or you know got cover-ups and all that kind of stuff so i'm really interested to see what other people have to say and of course there are some famous ones out there we'll see how many of those get mentioned for now though we're going to go out to eric bay he was on location earlier thanks guys well today we are here at the vault and now i know if your baseball season hasn't ended then it will be shortly but there's still tons of stuff to do here during the off season great facility here and that we'll be talking a little bit about the bulldogs baseball academy and their fall ball and also their winter camps that will be running here in the next few months so we'll be checking those out kind of what it offers for you during the off season and how you can sign up but before we get to that we're going to head back into the studio and abby will take a look at your local news more than a billion Muslims around the world celebrated Eid al ahad one of Islam's biggest holidays this Sunday. The international celebrations, which takes up to four days to complete, marks the annual Hajj pilgrimage to Mecca in Saudi Arabia, a journey that most hope to take at least once in their lifetime. So one time they have to go to Saudi Arabia, Mecca, and do the pilgrimage. The Hajj itself has many rituals, going to, to from one mo mountain to another mountain and doing the pilgrimage and spending the night in Mina and then listening to the sermon in Arafat, so many rituals. And these rituals actually take some time. For Imam Mansour Azim, he too hopes that one day he'll be able to take that long journey to Mecca. Well, it means a lot. I haven't, you know, saved enough yet, so I haven't done it. Although the local celebration is a one-day event, the international one takes four days to complete. The day begins with morning prayers and continues with visits from families and friends, having a feast and exchanging gifts. This year, it starts on Sunday and ends on Thursday. And traveling across the world to learn more about different cultures is the goal for some people. Experiencing a different lifestyle and seeing a new part of the world is exactly what Rotary Youth Exchange student Abigail Jurgens did over the past year. At the Rotary meeting, Jurgens, a Holy Rosary High School student, told her tale of the experiences she got being an exchange student and traveling throughout Japan. She was very delighted with how the trip went. I just loved experiencing so many new things and getting to go to some amazing places and honestly just there are so many amazing people um, and I'm just so grateful towards. She left for Japan around the middle of August of last year. Abigail is grateful for the support she received from the Rotary community throughout the journey. It was huge. I got emails from Sumerians um, asking how I was doing. Um, checking up on me um, and they actually sponsored this whole trip for me which I am just so grateful towards. Without them I wouldn't have been able to go. For anyone who's interested in joining an exchange program or simply traveling the globe, Abigail suggests that you get out there and connect with different people from around the world. A full day of festivities took over a hamlet town north of Vermilion. Residents came out to celebrate a town with lots of heart over the weekend at the Clan Donald Fair. A town of 100 people quadrupled in size in one day for their annual Clan Donald Fair. And it seems the president of the Clan Donald Egg Society was quite pleased with the turnout. People look forward to it. A lot of people take time to come to it. The 42nd annual country fair was filled with fun things for the whole family, from a street parade to chuck wagon races, rides, face painting and watermelon eating contests and more. It was a day that showcased the town's best assets and they're hoping more will come at their next event scheduled for early in the new year. For 37 years, Ray Mitsuing has been chuck racing with the CPCA. Over those three decades of racing, he has seen the sport change to what it is today. In this week's retrospect, we take a look at those changes and what brings people back every year.
In 24 hours, these stands will be filled to capacity as the Westridge GMC CPCA Finals hits the Lloyd X grounds. And just like last year, expect another serious fight for the top. Brian Labacane enters the final in third place. The St. Wahlberg resident is having another solid year, winning on the longer track in Onion Lake. Labacane hopes to add another solid performance on a special Sunday. I would come from behind and run by BJ on the home stretch. So, you know, we're looking forward to this long track. You know, have a better shot at possibly winning the truck. And, and it would be just fantastic if we could do that on our 40th wedding anniversary. Flash forward to today and some of the biggest changes that Mitsuing has seen over the years is how the tracks look, that they're much nicer than how they used to be. The other change being the increase in safety when it comes to the wagon itself. The wagons have changed to ensure that every driver is operating a safe wagon. The wagons are so much better now. now they don't have the straight uh, skeins anymore. They, they're more uh, bushing type wagons now and uh, stove racks were eliminated. They used to be hanging there with a chain in, in the back there and, and that was quite dangerous. And then the other thing is the uh, um, reaches and the poles are all uh, steel now and everything's safety right to the hilt now. And Something that the CPCA has always had and always will is the crowd that it brings in at every event every year. Saskatchewan and Alberta basically, uh, it's a Western Western heritage, you know, and uh, going way back to before our time, I guess that the people used to run horses all the time and then it's continued to grow with uh, the spectators being familiar with the horse area, you know, and I think that's basically what keeps them coming. Over the years, the CPCA has been the subject of misconception when it comes to the treatment of their horses, and racers, including Mitsuing, have stated that they're all false and challenged those people to come see for themselves that their horses are very well treated. You should come and look, come to the Calgary Stampede or wherever show they wanted to go to, and inspect uh, the people's horses and stuff, how they look after them. People put so much, we put so much time into these horses to keep them, and they're just like part of the family, you know, and uh, they're so, so much misconception over how, how, how they think, you know. With this being Ray's final year racing, he believes that the CPCA will continue to grow and improve every year. It's progressing every year. You know, it's like the prize money is getting so much better and uh, the, the, what we used to run for, uh, that's going to keep uh, the boys interested in it. And then the safety part, there's so much emphasis on safety now that, uh, you know, it's a lot, a lot, a lot safer in, than it used to be. Starting this Wednesday, the CPCA finals will be taking place at the Lloyd X. And that's it for this week's Retrospect. Retrospect is brought to you by Webb's Machinery. Webb's Machinery, your New Holland dealer in Vermilion, Vegreville, and Lamont. Now we're going to Eric Bay, who is on location today. Once again, we are back here at the vault and we are talking baseball and more specifically fall ball. And I'm joined now by Josh Herback South. And so can you tell us first off a little bit about what you guys do have going on for the fall ball season? So for our fall ball program, we're going to have a 12U, 14U and 16U program. And 16U and 12U, we're going to get some traveling done. And 14U is going to be specifically located in Lloyd Minster. And the whole point of the fall ball program is to develop young ball players. And we actually have a couple guys that are leaving to school this year going to PBA in Lethbridge. So that's the ideal goal is to get the athletes to an elite level or to the, the highest level that they can attain. And um, that's, that's our goal here. And you mentioned that 16U. There will be some travel involved, but can you tell us more specifically as to where they will be traveling to? Last year we were playing against academies in Edmonton, Saskatoon, Regina. So typically how it goes is we'll go do a, a home stand there and then they'll come and do a home stand here. So it's typically a double header and we try to get about 16, 20 games in for the season. And now for that fall ball too, you mentioned 16 to 20 games. So can you tell us maybe about the, uh, the time period for that and, and what kind of maybe the commitment is for the kids as well? For the fall ball season? Fall ball season is going to be August 27th to October 30th. So it's about a two month span and we try and get as many games in weather cooperating and we practice a couple times a week for the older group and once a week for the younger groups. All right, thank you for this. We're going to have some more back from here once again, but before that we are going to head back into the studio.
exciting stuff out at the field there. 19 degrees uh, with some cloud popping, or some sun rather, popping through the clouds, but relatively cloudy day still, not as cloudy as we expected heading into the week. And so that at least is a plus. We should see a little more cloud cover over the next 24 hours. 1984, certainly a warmer day uh, than it was in 1993. Again, everyone was probably out uh, seeing movies in the theater rather than spending their time outdoors. Uh, northeast winds have come down to only 8 kilometers per hour, so at least there's not much of a wind chill with those 19 degrees. Now you can see satellite and radar earlier today, um, a low pressure system sort of making its way south. There's another one making its way north that could hit the Lakeland region a little later on in the evening. Uh, next slide here, we have our current temperatures, 17 in Edmonton as well as 14 in Red Deer. So a couple of areas have dropped down well below seasonal averages. It's also 14 in Edson and it's 15 out in White Court and in Jasper. On the SAS side, 21 in both Meadow Lake, Prince Albert and in North Battleford. Melfort holding at 19 degrees and Saskatoon, which has been closer to average temperatures than most of the rest of the province, is still just a bit under that at 20 degrees at the moment. Your next three days, 18 and 10, a strong chance of rain tomorrow uh, in the border city with wind out of the south-southwest. Then on Wednesday, a fair amount of sunlight and a return to close to seasonal averages at 22 degrees with a low of 9. Then there's another chance of rain on Thursday, maybe even an outside chance of a thunderstorm, over 50% possibility of precipitation at the moment. A high of 20 and a low of 13, that if that does in fact come to fruition, that will be a big blow to the CPCA where they will have day two of the CPCA finals this week. That's been your three day forecast. We'll have your seven day later on on the show. Welcome back. Well, Regina Base Farm Credit Canada is providing $100,000 to expand a mental health support system for farmers. The SEC says it has reached a partnership with the Do More Agriculture Foundation to expand a network of mental health first aid responders. Last year, the two organizations started a pilot project in 12 communities, training more than 230 rural residents. It says the goal now is to set up workshops in two dozen communities to train over 400 first responders. And now we're going to take a look at your egg prices. part of less than 5% of Canadian auto body shops and Lloydminster's only locations with certified collision care recognition at City Centre Auto Body. The CPCA has officially rounded the last corner of its Western Canadian tour with the final stop being this past weekend in Turtleford, Saskatchewan. Drivers had one last chance to gain points ahead of Wednesday's opening day at the championships here in Lloydminster. The weekend saw Chris Molly come away with the fastest time on the short Turtle Ford track, nearly breaking the one minute mark. CPCA leader Todd Baptiste had his best run Friday night, finishing second, and continues to pace the leaderboard ahead of the finals. For Team Baptiste, confidence is high and things are clicking coming into this week. We're just excited and uh, full of confidence this year. The horses are doing great. Uh, Outriders are doing a fabulous job, uh, the whole team's clicking, so, um, you know, a lot of momentum rolling into Lloyd. The focus for Baptiste right now, holding that number one spot on the leaderboard, as he knows the importance of being able to choose your barrel in chuck wagon racing. Definitely uh, a place where we want to be sitting on first, be able to pick our barrels, and I mean, that's, that's the... That's the only way you could win in the sport. Uh, you need to run the rail. We have uh, very good competition here this year. Uh, you know, top uh, 10 guys each night are within a second. So, you know, any little error or any little penalty uh, can really put you down real quick. Baptiste and the rest of the CPCA field will hit the track beginning Wednesday here in the Border City as the jockey to become a Canadian champion begins. 
Baseball Provincial Championships were in the border city once again this past weekend, and this time it was the top tier two senior double A teams from across Saskatchewan. It was a North versus South final in the Provincial Championship on Sunday that saw the North Battleford Beavers take on the Parkland Pirates. Both teams actually met earlier in the day in the round robin and then squared later in the afternoon for the ultimate prize. A late surge by the Beavers made the game interesting, but it was the Pirates that held off the Battleford team and eventually were crowned Provincial Champions with a 4-2 win. You know, it wasn't an easy battle. I mean, every game we had was close. Uh, great group of players we had on our team here. And, yeah, it's a great feeling to end the year here. And, you know, everyone kind of battled and contributed. And it's a really good feeling for everyone, I think. For the Border City Blue Jays, they finished the weekend 2-2 two and two and were unable to capture the coveted three-peat. But for the Pirates, they napped their first provincial championship since 2015. And now we're going to Eric Bay, who was on location today. Once again, we are back here at the vault and we're talking about the Bulldogs Baseball Academy and Josh Herbach South joins me once again. So first off, I know you guys are entering here your third year. So can you talk about maybe how the program got started here in Lloydminster? Absolutely. So our birthday is coming up here and uh, Bulldogs were fortunate enough to have a man of the name Derek Flash start the program. So he actually runs Western Pro Sporting Goods in town here and it was his idea with David Keck to start a baseball academy here. and. Um, that's, that's the only reason we are where we are today. And now we did mention in the last bit there about fall ball, but you guys also do offer some winter camps as well. So can you talk about what those uh, do entail? We do winter training. So that'll be from November until April. And that's going to be training in infield, outfield defense. It's going to be pitching. It's going to be hitting. Um, we do a little bit of base running work. So we train all aspects of the game throughout the off season. And now talk about that too, you do mention those camps, they're more specialized, so what's the importance of uh, you know, breaking it down to the basics of baseball and learning those more spe specialized? Well, you have to break it down to the basics, but it, it has to be individualized for every athlete. So every athlete is going to have different strengths and weaknesses, and the best thing you can do is, is assess those strengths and weaknesses and, and build off the weaknesses and, and build those strengths as, as much as you can. And so now if people do want some more information, whether it be about the fall ball or those winter camps, uh, where can they find that? We have a website that just went up about a week ago, so they can go to bulldogsbaseballacademy.com or they can go to our Facebook page. And either place you can get all the information you need. All right, thank you for this. We're going to have some more coming up once again back here. We'll be talking again about the Bulldogs Baseball Academy, all the stuff that's coming up in general about baseball that you can look forward to here going on in the off season. But before we do get to that, we are going to head back into the studio. Thank you very much, eBay. Next 24 hours here are dropping down quickly by 10 p.m. and we'll get down uh, near single digits by 5 a.m. Unfortunately, hanging through in the teens and we'll be back up into the mid-teens by the time we get to lunchtime. Uh, still definitely below seasonal averages, and we do have a chance of uh, rain coming in a little later in the week, so not the warmest week in August, certainly not the ideal week people were hoping for heading into the CPCA finals, but still uh, certainly nicer than some of the days we had to endure back in July. Uh, your next 24 hours wind chill will eventually come up as our technology catches up to us. Uh, because we have some gusts of about 15, 20 kilometers coming in, that will lightly affect the temperature, so bringing things down by about three to four, maybe five degrees. Uh, your current temperature is 19 in Vermilion, 18 out in Vegreville, and dropping one more degree in Edmonton at 17 degrees. Bonneville, St. Paul, Lac La Biche, all hanging around at 20 degrees, and a little bit warmer as usual on the SAS side. 22 in both Green Lake, Meadow Lake, and St. Walberg. 21 up north in Isla Cross. Maidstone's at 18 degrees. North Battle there you can see holding at 21. A little cooler than normal down south. Provost and Macklin with some heavy cloud cover sit at 16 and 14 degrees respectively. Again, North Battleford at 21 degrees, dropping down to 9 overnight as the wind shifts from the east to the south. Fairly cloudy conditions all the way through, and that will continue on into tomorrow where they could see some rain. 
and the wind comes out of the south-southwest, expecting a high of 20 degrees over in that region. 21 right now in Cold Lake, also expecting some heavy cloud cover and could see some rain for the next 24 hours. Uh, once we hit nighttime, that could certainly start up with a little precipitation and then not heavy, but steadily will continue on uh, through the next day. Wind shifting again from the southeast to the southwest. Um, all of those speeds, though, expected to be below uh, 10 kilometers. 19 in Lloydminster with a low of 10 and then 18 tomorrow. Again, an outside chance of some rain there with a low of 10. 22 and 9 on Wednesday before 20 and 13 and another chance of rain. Friday again an outside chance of precipitation with a high of 17 and 23 on Saturday, 16 Sunday and 18 Monday. Hopefully Sunday will at least will be the one we don't have rain for the dash for cash. Now we're going to Eric Bay who was on location today. Once again, we are back here, and today we've been talking about baseball and more specifically fall ball and what you can look forward to here in the winter. And again, Josh Herback South joins me, and we're talking a little bit about this facility. You know, it's pretty nice. Can you talk about uh, the ability and the 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 ability yeah, to uh, to check out this facility and be able to work here throughout the winter? Yeah, the vault is an absolutely great place to train baseball in the off season. It's certainly an upgrade from where I used to train, which would have been a, a old recycling plant and. Uh, elementary school gym so you have everything you need here in terms of um, being able to hit pitch uh, field and um, it, it's excellent training here and now talking again about your experience there can you tell us maybe a little bit about what got you into baseball and your experience through baseball here before you did turn into coaching well I was born with the baseball in my hands so um, it was pretty natural that that I was going to play baseball as long as I could and, and that's what I did I had some injuries that that cut my career a little bit shorter than I would have liked. So um, the best way I can give back everything that I've learned is, is to coach and, and train these young guys as best as I can. And now you guys do offer the fall ball and the winter camps, which is great for a place like Canada where it's such a short season. So can you talk to me about the importance of that training here kind of throughout the year and keeping, keeping it fresh? Yeah, it's just not enough to play in your three-month season here to stay uh, at an elite level. So um, it doesn't have to be annoying, but you do have to get your reps in in the off season. It could be once a week. You just have to make sure that you're doing them properly and, and somebody's watching you and helping you along the way. And then once again, can you talk again about the fall ball and the winter camps you do have coming up here? So fall ball will be starting August 27th, and that will wrap up October 30th. And then the winter programming will start right after that in November, and that will go all the way till April. All right, thank you once again for doing this. We are going to have some more back from here at the vault, but before we get to that, we are going to head back into the studio. So our question of the day has plenty of potential to veer off into different directions. Um, what conspiracy theory do you actually believe? And according to the commenters, there's a couple of real mainstream ones, such as the moon landing, mm -hmm. that some of them do actually believe in. Yeah. Well, yeah, that one was interesting because even now people are still debating whether it's whether it actually happened or whether it was just staged, which is kind of interesting to think about. Yeah, and it's it brought up a question that we kind of briefly talked about off air, which is that. Um, a lot of people, so for example, in the NASA community, they don't like that it gets pushed out yeah. there because they think it hurts what they do at NASA. So they yeah. almost wish it, it was, there was better information around it. Yeah, exactly. You know, people are just saying that it never happened, but all these hardworking um, astronauts and scientists and that work for NASA, they know the truth. And so hopefully one day. <laughs> hopefully one day, maybe we'll be able to go in a time machine and just yeah. look back at those types of things. Um, we got to get to our pet of the day as we're running out of time faster than normal and we never want to miss those pets. And we're going to start with Hope. Very, very adorable. I wish we had more hope in the world sometimes. Rerun uh, has made an appearance before on the show and she's back. Yes, and obviously tuckered out from probably running around in the field. Indeed, Roscoe. Very, very adorable horse, gorgeous. Next here, Howie and Cricket seem to be fast friends. I love how the dog is laying just sprawled out on his back. And we'll end with Harley and Molly, who were uh, definitely appropriate attire for a wedding. Yes, very cute, very fluffy, and very well-dressed. Props to the groomer, and props to anyone who submits both the name and the picture of their pet for this contest. 
We want to see your pets. Send photos of your pet and their name to our Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram to have them featured on Pet of the Day. Your name will be entered into a weekly draw for a gift certificate from the Pet Pad. Welcome back to Primetime Local News. Greg Buchanan in studio to talk sports. And what a week it's about to be. The final showdown for the CPCA at the Lloyd X here in Lloydminster. And once again, we have a chance to see a historic uh, showdown because of how close the standings are. Uh, it's going to come down to probably the last day to find out who the final four are. Yeah, you have four days of points from Wednesday to Saturday. So all the points will end on Saturday night. And you'll determine your top four racing for the Canadian Championship for Championship Sunday. And, and really right now, you have four drivers in the top four. Then you have about three or four knocking on the door for that top four. So it's down to a precious few points. So every night of racing is going to be vitally important. And, uh, you know, some great storylines going into this. What a season Todd Baptiste has had. Ray Mitzwing, 65 years of age. Sunday will be his last trip on the track. He could be racing for a Canadian championship. It looks pretty good that he will be. His son, Dale, who won a Canadian championship last year, could be racing for a Canadian championship. And Chris Smalley wins in Turtleford on the weekend. And he is now sitting in that top four spot and knocking on the door for second spot right now. So it's, it's going to be really interesting and it's going to come right down to that final night of racing on Saturday for points, getting you ready for championship Sunday the next day. Chris Molly really had a bit of a slow start to mm -hmm. the season, by his standards anyway, yep. dropping out of the top five uh, in the first couple of weeks. But he's really rounded into form over the past month. And as this past weekend showed, uh, it's unlikely that we uh, won't see him in that dash for cash at the end again. Yeah, a good chance he'll be in that final dash for cash again. Uh, you know, more than anything, there's two times you want your horses to peak. In, in, in professional chuck wagon racing. One is at the Calgary Stampede and one is at the Canadian Finals. And, and, and Chris's horse has peaked at times during the Calgary Stampede, won a day money there, uh, but now they seem to be almost peaking right now at the right time of the season. So look for good things out of Chris Molly. And now he's obviously not out of the woodwork officially. The only one who we can really say has booked that spot, barring something disastrous, is Todd Baptiste mm. based on the points. But even Ray Mitsuing um, is only a few points ahead of Chris, only a few points ahead of Dale, only a few points ahead, you get the picture. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Line. Yeah, right now, Todd Baptiste. And, and more than anything, when you look at all the different awards in the CPCA, the High Point Award is something to be very proud of. The High Point Award means you did something well in June, July, and August. You raced that good for three months to be the High Point Award winner. As much as there's a truck and there's a Canadian championship on the line, the High Point Award winner is like the President's Trophy in the NHL. Right. You played 82 games during the hockey season and you won the President's Trophy as the best team. That is something that's a very big feat. And when you look at the last couple of drivers who are vying for that fourth spot, uh, which is huge obviously yep. given what happened last year with Dale Mitzwing making history, um, do you have a sense of which driver's best position to make that jump? Well, you, you look at Brad McMahon. He was in the top four for the longest time. Fell out of that top four in Frog Lake. Now he's knocking on that top four again. Had a solid weekend in Turtleford. For look for good things out of Brad. And don't count out the likes of Jamie Labacane, who's had some pretty good runs too. You had a chance. Ben's Miller's kind of on the outside right now. But uh, yeah, Jamie, Brad, and even Chance, and for that matter, B.J. Carey, all kind of knocking on the door for that top four spot. So we'll see how it unfolds. But it, yeah, it's going to be pretty interesting and a lot of excitement. In 10 seconds or less, give me your wildest bold prediction as to whether it's one driver, whether it's a good or a bad yeah. thing. It'll happen in one day or the whole show. I, I think it really it's going to come down that home stretch on Sunday afternoon, crown a Canadian champion, and it's going to be Todd and Ray side by side, and it's anybody's guess who it's going to be. And, uh, you know, the great storyline would be Ray Mitzwing, his final trip on the track, wins a truck. The other great storyline is Todd Baptiste comes out close to winning the Calgary Stampede and wins the Canadian Championship after racing that well for three months. So there's some great stories there. And, and Chris Molly's always been the bridesmaid, never the bride. Maybe this is the chance he gets the bride when everybody kind of counted him out. And last season, nobody counted Chris out. But yeah. this season, they kind of counted him out. So maybe this is a season... And what a story would be if Dale wins his second straight Canadian championship in just his second season in the CPCA. All of this you'll be able to find out over the course of the next couple of days, starting with the banquet tomorrow evening. Then the action gets underway on Wednesday.
back in studio with Greg Buchanan talking a few more items in the world of local sports as uh, again despite it being technically a slow time of the year there's actually a lot going on in Lloydminster this month not just because of the CPCA finals but also because of some of the championships we've had including the AA Senior Men's Baseball Provincials yep. where unfortunately the Border City Blue Jays were unable to defend uh, their back-to-back -back provincial titles from the past two years going two and two in their round robin thus eliminated and uh, yeah, tough one for the Jays. Yeah, tough one for the Jays. Uh, Parkland wins it out of Yorkton area, uh, be defeated North Battleford in the final. Parkland's a good, strong team, good pitching, good hitting. Uh, Border City Blue Jays had a great regular season in the River League. Uh, unfortunately, they didn't come to play against Standard Hill, and Standard Hill defeated them. So, you know what? You kind of wondered going into provincials what Blue Jay team will see. That team that played so well during the regular season had a setback in playoffs or that team that had that setback in playoffs. Yeah. And it kind of was that team that had that setback in playoffs. But you know what? There's some great teams there this past weekend. So you know what? Blue Jays have nothing to hang their heads about. And another disappointment that stems not from specifically what happened during the weekend, but leading up to the weekend, you didn't have the Lloydminster Twins mm -hmm. at Provincials, who have not been at Provincials for a couple of years. But uh, kind of too bad that we couldn't have had both local teams mm -hmm. at Provincials for that weekend. Yeah, you kind of wish that that would have happened. Uh, yeah, the Twins haven't been at Provincials for a few years now. And, you know, you good to see the Jays. And they have been a provincial force. And they kind of took a step back this year. But, you know, they have some young kids coming up. And, uh, you know, Jesse Stansfield's one of those kids that really stands out for the Jays. And, and look for him and some other younger ones that step up. And they'll be good down the road, too. Another local event happening over the past weekend was the Paul Douglas uh, Annual Tennis Tournament, their big tournament of the year. Once again, huge numbers, uh, helped in part by those two extra courts they've had. Yep. And uh, on a weekend where Canadian tennis was obviously yep. um, quite the event with Bianca Andreescu uh, winning the Rogers Cup, um, you had a lot of people in town show up not only to play but also cheer on people at the tennis you tournament. Know, well, that's great to see because you, they put a lot of money into those courts and, and expanded the courts and, and making the court. And you're seeing a lot of that going on around rec facilities and the sports diamonds. Uh, you look at the ball diamonds for the Bantam right by the hospital getting ready for Westerns this weekend. So they're upgrading there, upgrading the tennis courts. So that's great to see. And, and more, you're hoping that going to drive more people to the tennis courts when they see the upgrades they have made. And we're probably driving a few people towards those ballparks as well with this upcoming weekend in that championship. Yeah, I got Western Canadian Bantam Boys have Baseball Championship, so a lot of good ball players in town, a lot of Cowboys too in town, so it'll be a good mix of a whole lot of fun from chuck wagon racing to baseball. Uh, a lot of sports to watch this weekend. Yeah, and we were talking off camera just a little bit um, with conditioning camp starting yep. for on uh, in the Civic Centre. Hockey's really become a 12-month a well, sport now. It definitely is. Hockey, you know, back in the days when I was playing junior, it's nothing to where it is now. Uh, you know, you got in shape two weeks before training camp and you didn't do dry land or anything. Now it's 12 months a year. There's dry land training 12 months a year. doesn't matter if you're 8 years old or 18 years old. You're on the ice and you could be on the ice for 12 months a year. There's some people feel that, I don't know, that's a great thing. Uh, it, sometimes it's almost too hockey, too much hockey for right. kids, and sometimes kids need to be kids come summertime. Let them go to the lake, let them have some fun, and and go back to hockey in September. So, you know, there's a there's kind of a debate always about that. And as there always will be, uh, any debates coming up on the uh, pro sports show, or sorry, the sports show tomorrow night? Yeah, Tuesday night sports show, usually live from the Canadian Brew House, but tomorrow night we'll be at the Stockade Building at the Women of the Wagons Gala, brought to you by Women of the Wagons, as well as the Lloyd Minster Exhibition. We'll talk a little CFL. Derek Taylor, the voice of the Riders, will be in. Also, the voice of the Edmonton Eskimos, Morley Scott, will be in talking about what was an interesting week in the CFL, including a game that was shortened by weather in Montreal and awarded the win to the Riders, even though they didn't play the full game. It also will have uh, all the latest in the CPCA setting up for the CPCA finals. Can't wait to see that and can't wait for the awards banquet tomorrow. Uh, have a great rest of your evening.